How's it going everybody? My name is Lucky Buns. In today's video, I'm going to be going over everything you need to know about Mega Lucario Raid Day and Pokemon Go. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so first of all, this Raid Day is going to be taking place on Saturday, July 27th from 11am to 5pm local time. The bonuses are going to be as follows. We're going to be getting 5 additional free raid passes. You must claim these between the time window though. You can also save one of your free passes in your inventory from the day before. This way you can do a total of 6 free raids. We're also going to get the boosted shiny rate of 1 out of 10 like typical raid days, which is actually really good for Lucario by itself because previously, the only way to actually get shiny Lucario in game was by hatching a shiny Ryolu. So in my opinion, this is actually actually a really big deal because getting a shiny Lucario before was almost slim to none. We're also going to be getting 1.5 times more experience from raid battles, which isn't really that significant, but I guess you can Lucky Egg if you really want to. I don't think it's that worth it. We're also going to be getting an increased chance to get extra large rare candy from in-person raids. And then finally, we're going to get the remote raid limit increase to 20 for the entire weekend. So I would highly recommend using Poke Genie for raid support if you guys do actually need help and you don't have that many players in your local area. Now I'm not done yet though. We're actually going to have an overlap event during this event as well, so we're gonna have the Ultra Unlock Part 2 event, the Strength of Steel. From this event, we're going to get the following bonuses. We're going to get additional extra large candy for catching Pokemon if you're level 31 or higher, and then we're also going to get additional candy and extra large candy for nice throws or better. So typically the way that this works is that if you get a nice throw, it's plus one candy. If you get a great throw, it's plus two candy. And then finally, if you get an excellent throw, it's going to be plus three candy. Now that is just going to be for the standard candy rates. I'm not entirely sure if this is going to apply for the extra large candy rates, as that is a bit more randomized. And then finally, we're going to get the three times catch Stardust bonus, which is going to be fantastic. Now on top of that, if you guys would also like me to make a separate video going over the Ultra Unlock Part 2 event, all the event details, plus some tips and tricks, let me know in the comments section down below. I was kind of undecided on this, but if there is enough demand, I'll definitely go ahead and make that. Next up, let's go over the event ticket, which is going to cost $5. From this event ticket, you're going to get 8 additional free raid passes. Once again, these are going to be the orange raid passes, and they must be used before 5pm. Now, the following bonus is going to be a slight variation to the free bonus, so we're going to get an increased chance to get extra large rare candy, but this boost is also going to apply for remote raids, unlike the free version. Version. Not to mention, on top of that, for catching Lucario, you're going to get one guaranteed extra large rare candy as well, which is pretty significant. I don't think they've actually done this specifically before, so I mean, for anybody who's actually like a pay to play player, this is a crazy good bonus. Now, on top of that, if you do also purchase the ticket, you're going to get three times more experience from raid battles. Now, I'm pretty sure this is just going to replace the free multiplier, so instead of 1.5 times more experience from raid battles, you're just going to get three times more experience. You are going to be getting like 10,000 experience per raid battle, and then that turns into 30 thousand experience with a lucky egg that is going to be 60,000 experience per Lucario raid battle. Let's say for example you got five raid battles done in half an hour, right? That is going to be 300,000 experience on a lucky egg. That is some pretty good gains right there, so definitely do recommend uh, dropping some lucky eggs if you guys do plan to raid this one hard. And then on top of that you're also going to get two times stardust from raid battles, which once again isn't really that significant of a bonus. I feel like this is mainly focused on experience, which again, like if I'm doing my math correctly here, that's going to be a lot of experience, so definitely make sure to go into this event with lucky eggs. Now you can also give these tickets to your friends, so if you want someone to raid with you a little bit longer, this is a pretty good incentive. The value itself is decent for the ticket if you at least use five of the extra raid passes that you're going to be getting, so really that shouldn't be that difficult to get done. I don't believe Lucario is going to be that difficult of a raid boss to take down, but we'll take a look at the simulations later on. Honestly though, this is a pretty big raid day compared to the previous ones that we have gotten. Like, we've never actually gotten a guaranteed extra large rare candy from the event ticket bonus, and same thing with the increased chance to get extra large rare candy if you're remote raiding. Normally, Normally that has been limited to in-person raids, so it's actually really interesting to see Niantic kind of take a different approach to these raid days and kind of be more inclusive for the remote raiders, at least in terms of bonuses that is. Like the price of these remote raid passes is still going to be the same. So now I have to ask the question, is this ticket actually worth it? And without a doubt, I'm going to say yes. Like this ticket is extremely good if you plan on raiding a lot during this raid day. Again, you're going to have six hours of raid time, like not including the remote raid passes as well. So you could go really hard for Mega Lucario if you wanted to or just for shiny Lucario if that's what you're after or shiny Mega Lucario because I'm pretty sure that's what everyone is going to be after. But on top of the free raid passes, the increased chance to get extra large rare candy plus the one guaranteed extra large rare candy when catching Lucario and the three times experience from raid battles, like that is pretty amazing. Like we never get anything that's like that. So definitely living up to its name in terms of the Ultra Unlock Part 3 event, this is definitely a really good event and I don't think we're going to have anything like this moving forward. But if we did, I mean I don't think players would be complaining. I totally 
forgot to mention this as well, but I don't really think it's that important. You're also going to get early access to a new avatar item if you do end up buying the ticket. I'm pretty sure this is worded as like you're going to get early access, but you still have to pay for it. Not that you're going to get early access for free. Like that would be kind of cool. But yeah, anyways, you're going to get access to this Lucario mask, which I don't really think is that cool. But maybe some of you guys do. So in that case, like... I guess it's there if you want to get it early. I don't know. It's it's a little weird, but you have to go through the web store in order to actually get early access to this Lucario mask, which in general, like going through the web store to buy these tickets is usually a much better deal because you always end up getting something as a bonus. Next up, let's talk about Mega Energy for Lucario. So how much is it going to cost to Mega Evolve Lucario for the first time? So for Mega Lucario, it is going to be 200 Mega Energy, which is pretty good. You should easily get enough energy from just using your free passes alone. Like you can get this done in two raids, most likely one raid if you actually get done fast enough. So yeah, it should not be that difficult to get enough energy to actually Mega Evolve you Lucario for the first time, and then from there you can just walk it. So if you could only go out and do one raid, that's totally fine. I would aim to do at least two raids, but again, you're going to get a total of five free raid passes, six if you actually save one from the day before. So yeah, you should definitely be able to get this done. And once again, like with all the remote raid pass stuff going on this weekend, it should be pretty easy to get some raid support using Poke Genie. Next up, let's talk about the Raid Day exclusive moveset Force Palm, which is going to be a fast attack. So this is going to be the new move that Lucario is going to come with during this raid day. Right now, Game Press is undergoing some maintenance on their site, so it has been a little bit more difficult to do raid meta analysis checks for new moves, but I don't believe it is going to be an upgrade to counter, but that still has been undecided as of right now. We have to wait until this officially goes live into Pokemon Go. Now, how good is Lucario for PvP, right? Let's talk about this since we're kind of on the same topic here. So first of all, Lucario without Force Palm just factored in here is not ranked super well in PvP for the Great and Ultra League formats, and it's also hard to say if Force Palm is going to help it in the future, but as of right now, it's not looking too good for Lucario. Now regardless though, the optimal IV spread that you would want to go with is one that would actually be traded if you're going to be using it for the Great League or the Ultra League. The only way outside of Mega Raids to get Lucario is going to be by hatching Ryolu and then evolving it. So I would highly recommend keeping all of your extras for trades, and if you don't already have a good PvP IV spread for the Great League and the Ultra League, definitely make sure to mirror trade these Lucario with Force Palm for the foreseeable future. Again, like, if Force Palm ends up getting a move update in, like, the next season or two, which historically, Niantic does like to do this, sometimes even a few seasons down the line, to be honest. Like, Lucario could actually get a nice boost in the PvP meta. With that being said, though, another tip that I wanted to go over is actually hatching Ryolu and then giving it the secondary charge move while it's actually a Ryolu. So, for those of you guys who never actually noticed this, if you give it the secondary charge move as Ryolu, it costs significantly less less Stardust and Candy, whereas if you actually gave it to Lucario, it is much more expensive. So basically what I would recommend is to mirror trade your Rayolu with somebody else. If you end up getting a good IV spread or potentially even a lucky Rayolu, then you can go ahead and give it the secondary charge move and then evolve it into Lucario and now you're good to go. So once again, because Force Palm is going to be a new move added into the game completely, like this is the first time that we're ever going to see this move set, it's a bit more difficult to predict how it's actually going to be for Lucario in the PvP meta as well as the raid slash chip meta. So for my raid analysis, I'm just going to focus on using counter, but if Force Palm ends up being an upgrade, then, you know, you can just elite fast TM or just use the ones that you got from this raid day. But regardless, Lucario is going to be a beast, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. So let's talk about Mega Lucario first in the raid slash gym meta. So it is not an understatement here, guys. Like, Lucario, or sorry, Mega Lucario is going to be the king of fighting type Pokemon for the foreseeable future. Like, this is with counter, by the way. Like, if Force Palm ends up becoming better, it's going to just be even better. But you're also going to be getting the additional candy bonuses of both Steel and fighting when Mega Evolved, which is really, really good in my opinion. Like, that's a solid combination. So work on getting this Pokemon to Mega Level 3 as soon as possible. Now, the next best option below that would be Mega Heracross, followed by Mega Blaziken. They are both about 6 points lower on the ER scale, so that's actually a sizable difference for those who don't know. Now, in terms of your next best non-Mega, non-Shadow options, you also have Terrakion and Keldeo. Both are going to require Sacred Sword, and for Terrakion, that is going to be a Legacy moveset, so you're going to have to use an Elite Charge TM. Now, with that being said, I know some of you guys are wondering wondering how good Lucario is just by itself without the Mega Evolution, so let's take a look at that right now. So while it's not the best fighting type attacker in the game anymore, and it was at one time, Lucario is still a very good option to have by itself. I would recommend only building like maybe one or two of these though, so build your best one for the Mega, and then maybe a second one if you end up getting like a shiny Lucky, like that'd be really cool. The one that I'm personally working on right now is a normal Lucario with 15, 14, 14 IV, so that's going to be a 96% IV. I'm only 6 extra large candy away from getting this bad boy to level 50, so I really only need like one or two of these raids and I should be good to go. Now I do also have the shiny Lucky Rayolu, but the 
the IVs really aren't that optimal on it, so if I'm able to get another one with better IVs, I might end up building a second Lucario in the future, because the shiny just looks that nice. But as of right now, I'm just going to go with the standard regular one, which again, still looks pretty cool. But given power creeps, I wouldn't personally build more than two of these, so just keep that in mind. Like, instead, I would ideally focus your efforts on Terrakion when it eventually makes its appearance back in raids. Historically, this would be sometime around November slash December. Now finally, let's go over Lucario and Team Go Rocket battles, right? So I rarely ever highlight these in videos, but for Lucario, I did want to highlight this one. I have used Lucario so much for Team Go Rocket battles, like the Grunt battles as well as the Leader battles. So ideally, you want to have Counter plus Power at Punch and Aura Spear. You can really take advantage of the Stun Lock feature by spamming Power at Punch, and it's also going to boost your attack by one stage each turn for up to four times. So against Team Go Rocket Pokemon that are weak to fighting, this thing sweeps. Even against the team leaders and Giovanni, Lucario is great for burning shields. Now factor Mega Lucario into the mix here, and this thing is going to be even more OP with this combo. Next up, let's take a look at the 100% IVs for Lucario. So for the standard Lucario raids, non-weather boosted, the Hundo CP is going to be 1544. The odds of getting a weather boosted Lucario are pretty low unless you're doing remote raids, but again, like, your options are either cloudy weather or snowy weather, and this time of the year, I guarantee it's probably not snowing too many places. Next up, let's take a look at the counters for Lucario. So we're going to be using Poke Battler as always. Link is going to be in the description down below. Now the best counters for Lucario are going to be Fire and Fighting types. Now in terms of the baseline I'm going to be using for these raid attackers, we're going to go with level 30, extreme weather, and no friendship bonus. Which means if you have the friendship bonus, if you have the weather bonus, like these are all going to factor a lot into terms of how you can actually beat it. The reason I like to go with these baselines is mainly just to show players how difficult this Pokemon is to beat if you don't have any of this stuff going on. But if you do, then it should be pretty easy to get it done, right? So we'll take a look at those later. But in terms of your best options here, you have Primal Groudon, Mega Blaziken, uh, Mega Charizard. Primal Groudon requires Precipice Blaze, but you can also use Earthquake. Uh, Mega Charizard also requires Blast Burn. Um, in terms of the alternate option, I guess you could go with Flamethrower if you don't have Blast Burn, but I'm sure a lot of you guys do have Blast Burn on your Mega Charizard. You also have Shadow Groudon with Mudshot and Precipice Blades. You have Mega Heracross with Counter plus Close Combat. Now, Mega Heracross is actually a really good option to run during this raid day because you're also going to get the extra large candy bonus and the regular candy bonus because it's a fighting type Pokemon. Whereas with Primal Groudon and Mega Charizard, you're not going to get that additional candy bonus. So Mega Heracross, probably the MVP in terms of which Mega you want to go with during this raid day if you do have enough players around you. But again, this raid doesn't look that difficult to beat. Um, honestly, this win time is pretty good, which means you can get it done with like two players pretty easy. Now on top of that though, let's go over some more counters. So we have Mega Garchomp here with Mudshot plus Earth Power. So again, these are all like Legacy Calm Day movesets, Earth Power, Blast Burn, uh, Precipice Blades. Uh, we also have Reshiram with Fire Fang plus Fusion Flare, another uh, Legacy moveset right there. We have Mega Lucario, which I'm not even going to talk about because why would you have Mega Lucario if you're doing Mega Lucario raids during its debut? That doesn't really make any sense. Uh, we have Shadow Moltres with Fire Spin plus Overheat, a Shadow Ho with Incinerate plus Sacred Fire. So that is going to be specifically Apex Shadow Ho, not regular Shadow Ho. -Oh. I'm going to skip through some of these other shadows. We have Keldia with Low Kick plus Sacred Sword. We have Terrakion with Double Kick plus Sacred Sword. Again, I talked about these two in terms of fighting types. Very, very good fighting types to have. Uh, we have Shadow Entei with Fire Fang plus Overheat. No Legacy movesets there, so that one should be pretty easy if you guys were doing the Entei raids during this uh, month of uh, weekend raids. We also have Shadow Machop with Karate Chop plus Dynamic Punch. If you don't have Karate Chop, that's fine. Just use Counter. That'd be the next best option, and there's no Legacy movesets there. Interestingly enough, we have Blacephalon with Incinerate plus Mystical Fire as well. We have Landorus, Therian Form, Mudshot, Sansir Storm, uh, Shadow Garchomp, Mudshot, Earth Power. So you kind of get the idea here, right? I'll scroll through the rest of these, but those are pretty much the top counters that we can see here. Now, let's say, for example, you had, um, you know, level 40 attackers. Uh, the weather bonus, I'm still going to leave out just because that's a little bit unpredictable. But let's say, for example, you had it with best friends, right? How much faster could you actually beat this raid? So it's looking like about uh, 50 seconds faster on average, which is pretty good. We could even add in the weather boost as well. So like as of right now, based on what I'm seeing, Mega Lucario can be soloed. But again, like this is based off the future Mega tier. We have no idea how difficult it's actually going to be until it actually goes live. So these are just simulations. Like don't go in thinking that you can solo Mega Lucario if you don't actually have the optimal counters. Level 40 to 50 isn't really that big of a difference as I've said many times in my videos. But again, the feints matter a lot, right? That time it takes to revive is really important like that's what is not factored in here in the terms of the time to win so like if you have to faint out at least twice sometimes even three times depending on the counters that you're going to be using like for Terrakion that's going to be a lot of faints in which case like the solo becomes a lot less realistic but again that's level 40 counters it's also cloudy weather at the end of the day, guys, like, you can do the simulations yourself on Pokey Battler if you do want to uh, potentially solo this Pokemon. It is possible, and I'm probably going to give it a go myself maybe during uh, one of the raids during this raid day. But 
That being said, you know, getting this done with some other players, two to three, you should be good to go. I totally forgot to mention this as well, but if you're also going to be playing with others consistently throughout the day, make sure to party up to get additional raid damage bonuses. Now, real quickly, let me go over some additional tips and tricks for you guys, starting off with the Mega Evolution you want to have active. So Mega Lucario is going to be a steel and fighting type Pokemon. So if you want to get additional candy and extra large candy, not to mention if you buy the ticket, that's going to be even more candy. Plus, we have the Ultra Unlock Part 2 bonus, where you're going to get a ton of candy just for landing more nice, excellent, and great throws. I don't know why I went in that order, but if you land more nice, great, and excellent throws, there we go, um, you're going to also get more candy. So really taking advantage of the candy bonuses here is going to be incredibly important. In terms of the best Mega Evolutions, you could have active. Uh, for the Steel types, you have Steelix, Agron, Scizor, and then for the Fighting types, you have Heracross, Lopunny, Metachamp, and Blaziken. I'm not going to recommend Lucario because if you Mega Evolve it that day, you're only going to have it at Mega Level 1, whereas most of these others, if you have been working on them, you probably have some at Mega Level 3, in which case I would prioritize that one over the others for increased candy and extra large candy during this raid day. Now you do also have the best of both worlds here in terms of using one as a raid attacker as well as your candy farming Pokemon, so those would be Mega Heracross, Mega Lupunny, or Mega Blaziken. In terms of the best one, we already saw that Mega Heracross is going to be the MVP in terms of the fighting type attackers right now, so if you have been working on that one for the past few months and you already have it at Mega Level 3, then definitely go Mega Heracross. In my situation, though, I don't actually have that at Mega Level 3 yet. I'm still working on it, so I'm just going to go with Mega Blaziken. Next up, let's go over Silver Pineapple Berry. So if you want to farm even more candy and you haven't exhausted your supply since Pokemon Go Fest, now would actually be a really good time to use these. Like, combined with the Mega Level 3 candy boost plus the Ultra Unlock uh, Part 2 bonus, if you get some excellent throws, you're going to get so much candy on this Pokemon during this raid day. Like, keep in mind, the only other way to get Rayolu candy is from hatching eggs and walking it outside of these raid battles. Now, you could also use your rare candy on Lucario. I know that some players have been doing that, but I really don't recommend doing this. Instead, I would recommend dumping your rare candy into legendary Pokemon, since those require 20 kilometers as walking buddies, and Lucario and Rayolu are only 5 kilometer walking buddies, so it's a much easier time to actually get, you know, more candy by walking it as your buddy, opposed to the legendary Pokemon, in which case that's where the rare candy should be going, so hopefully that does make sense. Now finally, let's go over Poke Genie for raid support. Like, assuming that you guys aren't going to have the best possible counters and you can't solo this Pokemon or you don't have that many players in your local area, I would highly recommend hosting your raids through Poke Genie to get the numbers you need to actually beat these raid bosses. Given that the remote raid limit is going to be increased to 20 for both July 26th as well as July 27th, this is going to be incredibly helpful for a lot of players. You can also use the campfire map in-game to search for raids and find local groups, so I would also recommend doing that if you want to, but at the end of the day, guys, like if it's just you out there, if you're just going to be ready Mega Lucario by yourself, Poke Genie is going to come in so clutch. Anyways, with that being said, that's pretty much everything that I have for you guys in this video. If you still want to check out some more content, then watch these two videos right here, but before you go, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you all real soon in the next one.